good afternoon, everybody, uh, and welcome to this session on Open Telemetry. Um, my name's Robert Casley, and I'm a, a observability strategist uh, for Splunk. I've been there for about three years now, uh, and I got acquired um, back in 2019, uh, where I was working for a company called SignalFX, which is a monitoring platform. Uh, that Splunk bought to bring in to build out their observability portfolio that we have today. Splunk have invested heavily into the open telemetry, uh, the, the whole open telemetry ethos, and I'm here today to basically talk to you about why you should uh, be using open telemetry today and the advantages and benefits that it actually brings. So uh, this is kind of what I like to describe as like a 101 to open telemetry to give you a little bit of insight into what it aims to solve, uh, what benefits it brings and what, what it can bring to you um, from an observability standpoint. So just to give you a bit of background on you know, why open telemetry exists today and, and why you should be using it is that we all know and just watching the talk beforehand, you know, People are building out environments in the cloud today. It's getting a lot more complicated these days. It's getting even more complicated, and we see more and more complex environments being uh, built out um, by, you know, SaaS platforms and and everything else like that. And these distributed environments can be quite small. They can be, you know, single deployments, or they can be large networks. Um, but you know, with all of this, it does generate complexity. We can already see in the diagram on the slide there that when you start using a cloud provider, you will start using multiple assets that they provide, whether that's like storage or a database or it's a hosting platform or maybe it's some cluster like a Kubernetes cluster, etc. And it, when you start to do that, you can then start trying to build in resiliency into your application by going multi-cloud. And this as well, again, increases complexity. And you're going to have you know, all of this out there. And somehow you've got to monitor it, and you've got to be able to understand what's going on. You've got to be able to easily troubleshoot it. And this, this complexity is bringing new challenges you know, to businesses every single day. So when you combine this with continuous deployments and continuous development, et cetera, it becomes something that you really do need to keep an eye on what is actually happening. And this is where open telemetry has really been developed now to really give you all of that insight. So on top of all this, you know, you're running all of your services on top of all this complex infrastructure. So now you've got infrastructure you need to worry about. You've then got your services that you need to worry about. And then maybe you've got something back in an on-prem data center that's a bit legacy that you've got to worry about. You can sort of like see trying to bring that all together into one sort of like single pane of glass or, you know, stop swiveling chairs. So you're looking at one screen for this and one screen for that. Wouldn't it be great if you could just like bring all of that information that you need, whether it's logs, whether it's traces, whether it's metrics, whether it's profiling data, whether it's database query performance, etc. You want to be able to bring that all in and be able to do that. And that is where um, being able to do that, you enter into the realms of observability. And this is, again, where open telemetry is really helping to bring observability to the people that adopt uh, open telemetry within their organizations. And traces, metrics, and logs are the things that people most talk about. You know, we call those the three pillars of, of observability. However, um, if you want to have a Google, there's a fantastic article uh, written by a gentleman called Yuri Shakuro, uh, who works for Meta, who has sort of like brought up a blog post about that there should actually be six pillars of observability. And I read this blog article, and I encourage you to read it as well. It's called The Six Pillars of Observability. Um, and he brings up the fact that, you know, today you should be looking at traces, events, metrics, profiling, logs, and exceptions. And open telemetry is going a long way to providing those six pillars. So it's quite interesting how we've shifted from the three pillars of observability into people now talking about the six pillars of observability. And having all this telemetry data 
is giving people deeper insights into what's happening within their applications. So where does OpenTelemetry sort of like inter integrate, integrate into? So you've got the platforms. You want to be able to monitor the platforms upon which everything is running. So that can be you know, Linux VMs, Windows VMs. We're talking Kubernetes, looking at Lambda functions. You know, the, the list goes on. Then obviously what is running on that infrastructure is going to be using a programming language. So then there's the SDK support for those languages, whether it's Java, Ruby, Python, .NET, Node, etc. And then there's all the other libraries that come with this when we're sort of like talking about inferred services where these services are talking to third parties. They might be talking to them over gRPC or over HTTP, etc. You want to get insight into that as well. So having this one piece of open telemetry where it's providing these capabilities to pull all this together, it just means that you can just focus on one tool to do the job for absolutely everything. And with open telemetry, it allows you to correlate that information. So you can sort of like start to see the related context. And I'll come on to that more later on in uh, the presentation. So open telemetry, just to give a little bit of history uh, in and around this. Um, open Telemetry was actually the formation of two previous projects, one of them being Open Census, which was a Google project uh, that they open sourced, and the other one being um, Open Tracing. And these have been brought together to provide the best of both worlds there. Um, it is now a CNCF um, hosted uh, project. It's the second busiest behind Kubernetes uh, within that. And there are many, many people uh, heavily invested into developing uh, open telemetry. I've mentioned Google, we've got Microsoft in there, AWS, and you know there are load of, loads and loads of vendors in the observability space that are also contributing and donating uh, their technologies to the open telemetry uh, product, uh, project. One of the nice things about open telemetry, historically, when you've wanted to do any of this, like tracing or, or monitoring, you've sort of like had to use a vendor's own technology to do it, and that kind of locks you in. With OpenTelemetry, OpenTelemetry allows you to be vendor agnostic. It allows you to easily choose where you want your data to go, so you're not locked in to one particular technology. And also, being an open source project, you can guarantee that if you have a quirky little something that you wanted to, to monitor or to get information out of, you know, there's an open source world out there that will probably develop something to be able to assist you. Or you could develop your, your, your you could develop it yourself and there is a contribution project available within OpenTelemetry where all these kind of third party or community contributions uh, go to. So OpenTelemetry, if you want to know more about it on the development side, etc., the web address is opentelemetry.io. Uh, you can go and visit there. You can see everything that's been uh, cooked up. Um, it is you know, an amazing project that a lot of people are now basically uh, moving towards, and it's becoming the de facto standard within the industry for collecting uh, that data. So OpenTelemetry is used to collect data in uh, many different ways. I'll talk about the different parts of the actual uh, project itself. There is something called the Open Telemetry Collector. Now that is an agent that will run on Windows and uh, Linux platforms. It is made up of something of, of three components, uh, three basic components. One is a receiver, one is a processor, and the other one is an exporter. The receiver part is responsible for receiving uh, that data. Now that could be uh, host metrics from the host that it's, it's living on, it could be Kubernetes cluster metrics if it's deployed as a daemon set in Kubernetes, it could be listening for traces uh, from, from an application, and then in the middle you've got the processing part. Now a good example of the processing part, it could be like stripping PII data for example. You've got this processing engine that can process all the data that's coming in first and then it passes it on to the exporter. Now the cool thing about the exporter is the exporter can then route it to the correct place, whether that's a, a metric store, a trace, somewhere to put your traces or somewhere to put your logs, but it can send it to multiple places. So that is also uh, quite a powerful feature. 
Also with the collector, whilst it can be deployed standalone like on a host to collect those metrics, traces, logs, etc., it can also act as a gateway. And you know, we see this with people running it uh, within cloud environments whereby they don't want you know, hosts within their VPC communicating with outside vendors at all. They just need to be able to have those hosts or those Kubernetes clusters route them through a gateway, and that gateway can be load balanced as well. So you've got that HA capability there with the uh, open telemetry collector there. The other part of the open telemetry uh, project is, th is basically the SDKs. And these are the SDKs that people are using to instrument their applications. There's been a lot of effort in the project to actually provide auto-instrumentation. And what uh, the project means by that is, is that try not to touch your code. You could literally just you know, launch your application, it's auto-instrumented for you, and you're going to get a good set of uh, information out of that particular application. However, there is always a need for additional intel, uh, in additional insight, a bit more deep dive into what's going on. So there is the ability to customize that and do some custom uh, integration using the OpenTelemetry uh, SDKs as well. And they have SDKs for all of the major languages uh, that we see today. One of the more recent uh, shifts uh, within the SDK part is what we're calling zero config. And this basically means is that you will have uh, an open telemetry collector running within your environment or on your host. You deploy a new service and it just gets picked up and it starts sending out the metrics and sending out the traces, etc., with no requirement for you to do actually anything with the actual application uh, itself. So with that, um, there's also like I said, is the important part is all about being vendor agnostic. You can go ahead and start uh, investing your time into open telemetry, and you could then, you know, choose where you want it to go. Whether you go homegrown, you know, and you use something like, you know, Prometheus or Grafana or Jaeger, or whether you choose to uh, use a vendor of one of the many vendors out there. Um, you know that you're not going to have to change anything further down the road if you decide to shift from like you know a vendor to homegrown or homegrown to vendor uh, etc so being being vendor agnostic is you know one of the key things of of open telemetry so there are other benefits to uh, open telemetry one of the key things is more sort of like in and around uh, consistency so being able to justify the right collection of data because everybody knows what it's like that they can get carried away when they instrument things and suddenly there's this whole splurge of data and nobody really knows what that data is. They, they use a bit of it but then they're still collecting other stuff and I'm sure there's people in the room here that have had you know setups using Prometheus and they just get bigger and bigger and bigger and nobody really knows what's going on and it's just like you know, with open telemetry, with the SDKs, when you just do the auto instrumentation piece, you're not going to get noise that you don't need. You're going to get, it, it's really been designed to focus on giving you that consistent, reliable information out of the, uh, out of the uh, applications that you instrument uh, with it. It's also the most simple choice. You know, I know that there are other tools out there that can get metrics, that can get logs, that can get traces, etc. You know, at one time there was open sensors and open tracing, as I mentioned, you know, but by bringing these two amazing projects together into one now, it's just an easier choice uh, for everybody to be able to just, you know, uh, use open telemetry. And it is, it is becoming uh, the de facto standard uh, uh, as, as people, you know, delve into uh, observability. And one of the key things about using open telemetry is being able to tie all that data together. And what I mean by tying all that data together is that if you were to take uh, the, the open telemetry WebJS SDK, that can provide you with RUM data, real user monitoring data or real user metrics from uh, a website. So as users hit a website, it generates information about that user's session on your website. It's, a, it's basically a, what's called a RUM trace. And this allows you to get information uh, about you know, what browser they're using, where did they come from, etc. But 
Because we're using OpenTelemetry to collect that and we're routing it all through uh, OpenTelemetry Collector and we're, we're bringing it into a back end or where, whichever back end it is, you can then start to correlate that data together and you can start to see the related content because when in the OpenTelemetry world, you're going to get something called a trace ID. And a trace ID, you can then track all the way through. So wouldn't it be wonderful that if you had a real user trace come in, so that's a real user on your website, initiate that, and then you can track that all the way through your application, right down to an APM trace, for example, and then dive into the logs for that given trace just from that one you know, by using one tool. You're not having to rely on multiple tools and try and stitch that together by looking across different things uh, to, to understand the full story of what's going on within that particular environment. And again, because it's an open source project, it is constantly evolving. It is constantly, yeah, you know, we're seeing new receivers being developed by people. We're seeing new exporters where people want data to go. Um, it's, it's really sort of like exploding. And, and again, with the processing part, you know, people are doing some really clever things in there, you know, with the data that's coming in and, and how they're processing it. And like I say, one of the best examples is masking PII data, for example, so uh, to protect um, that there. So. I'm just going to sort of like quickly talk through at a very, very high level and excuse my uh, drawing capabilities here, but um, this is just basically sort of like showing you how OpenTelemetry would sort of like integrate into a, a sort of like single uh, EC2 instance running an application. Now, I know um, in the real world, uh, MySQL database wouldn't live on the same host, but I've just done it for simplicity up here. So here we have a, a JVM you know, Java app, we've got gRPC and JDBC connectivity back to, the, uh, back to the database. And from here, the first thing that we can do is actually deploy the OpenTelemetry collector. So we actually deploy that onto the host, and we now have host metrics coming in. So we actually get to see, you know, how this EC2 instance is behaving. So you're going to get all the uh, standard metrics that you expect, you know, memory, disk, CPU, etc. But you're already getting insight into how the actual host is behaving um, and how well it is performing. And again, this data that comes out of this open telemetry collector, you can route it to wherever you want. It could be into AWS X-Ray, it could be into CloudWatch, but you've got um, you know, that data coming out of that collector. So then next, we're going to plug in our open telemetry SDK. And in this case, it's going to be our Java SDK. And when we uh, deploy this, um, it's going to auto-instrument that particular application, and we're now going to get traces out. But not only that, with um, as soon as you auto-instrument a Java application, you're going to get what we call the red metrics come out. And uh, red metrics stand for rate, error, and duration. So basically, you're looking at you know requests per second, how long they're lasting, and how bad is the latency you know from those requests. So now, by just plugging in this SDK, uh, you're going to get all the tracing coming out uh, of, of that. So you're going to get the trace and the, and the associated spans for that trace. And you're also going to get the red metrics coming out. So we've now got the host metrics. We've got the trace from the application itself. And we've also got the red metrics so we understand uh, the performance and uh, of, of this particular service. Now we, yes, sir. So with, with the auto-instrumentation piece, it's basically just going to sort of like bind itself to the application. And it will, you know, depending on, in this situation, it's really quite boring because it's just one little um, <laughs> application. But if we had a, a call in our application where we were going from this uh, service to, say, an API service and then to the MySQL database, the spans that make up that trace, you would see on those spans where it was going within within the application itself. Um, so class to class, not so much. But if we come into like when we come into the profiling aspect, then that's where we can see um, when we look at CPU profiling and memory profiling. That's when we can get down to more at the at the class level. This 
is, you're, I'll show you a diagram in a minute, the sort of like map that you'll get out of it. Yeah, okay. Um, now, with, with this, uh, we've instrumented this application here. The auto instrumentation will get you up, up and running very, very quickly. But like I mentioned before, you can do things like add your own custom span uh, tags. You can add your own resource attributes as well, which will, can be and will be attached to every single span that comes out. Now, a good example of that is the good old example of a version number. So as I deploy my service, I can add a custom span tag to introduce a version number to that. So when I'm looking at my traces uh, you know, in a UI, I'm able to then easily sort of like filter out to understand, OK, these were the red metrics of version 1. These are the red metrics of version 2. Are we seeing an improvement? Are we seeing a degradation, et cetera? Uh, it allows, allows you to do uh, that as well. So when you link um, the um, SDK to the application, that has to be, you know, recompiled to be able to uh, be instrumented. And this is what I was coming back to, that there's been uh, great advancements in what's called zero config, where you don't need to do this anymore. You can just launch your app. And uh, thanks to the zero config aspect within the project, it will automatically just, you know, detect that this application is running and take care of uh, things for you. So we've configured... Uh, this now, um, and again, just like with the OpenTelemetry collector, the agent uh, that's running on the host, you can determine where you want those traces to go with OpenTelemetry. So again, you are not restricted as where they could go. You can actually you know, have those traces coming out in different formats because OpenTelemetry supports Zipkin, it supports Jaeger, and uh, it also supports its own format as well. Um, and it also supports uh, ways to transport those over. We talk about gRPC as one method. There is another one that's called the Open Telemetry Protocol, OTLP. Uh, you can do that as well. And that's becoming, again, quite interesting because it's a very efficient protocol. Uh, you can talk no native OTLP or you can talk HTTP over OTLP uh, as well. So let's um, uh, see some screenshots because it, you know, a picture paints a thousand words when you sort of like see the kind of things that you can uh, to get out of that. So this is um, a screenshot of a Kubernetes cluster. So basically, the Open Telemetry Collector has been deployed into a Kubernetes environment. It's been deployed as a daemon set. That means it gets automatically replicated across the nodes within the Kubernetes cluster and it will start pouring out all the Kubernetes metrics uh, from that environment. And then that, in turn, allows you to drill down into, into, into workloads, into pods, uh, to be able to see the individual container performance, et cetera. And this is, again, the, the way that this has been designed is it's just going to give you the metrics that you care about. Uh, these, are the you know, these are the key metrics. This has been researched. It's been looked into as to what are the metrics that people need from Kubernetes to be able to understand you know, how Kubernetes is performing. The next step is to deploy your application on Kubernetes. And this is where you can deploy your instrumented application. And thanks to OpenTelemetry, you can start to build out a dependency map or a service map. So you can see how these services are all linked together. So we can see here, this is actually um, Google uh, wrote, or there's, a, there's a, a GitHub repo out there. It's called the Microservices Demo, uh, where they uh, provide you with an application I think it's nine languages, or seven or is it seven or nine languages uh, that is instrumented to send out tracing information uh, from that application, and it's built up of you know different services that all interact with each other. And when you configure this to send out traces, you can build out these these service maps uh, in the various tools that are available uh, out there for people. And it also allows you to see uh, like things like the uh, inferred services. And those could be like, like I say, like a, a Redis uh, store. It could be a, a MySQL or PostgreSQL database. It could be a third party uh, API provider. But that's where the buck stops with OpenTelemetry. You're not going to get any deeper into a third party API from here. But you can see that inferred service being called. So then you can also then see, you know, like on this service map here, you can see where any latency has been introduced. Because again, we're getting those red metrics out from this instrumentation. And that allows you then to see, you know, where there might be an issue. And on this service map example here, 
you know, we can see that we've got a uh, high error rate going on. On It's actually the payment service there uh, within this microservices demo uh, application. I talked about uh, introducing uh, custom span tags. Uh, down on the bottom right, uh, we, we have uh, introduced a version. And we can see, well, hopefully you can see, because it's a bit blurry uh, from my end here, but uh, you can see that there are two version uh, numbers highlighted there. And we can see that there is one particular version that is um, showing a very high error rate um, at almost 100% of errors uh, for a particular version that's been deployed. Because behind the scenes of that payment service, we have two different pods running, one at version 9 and one at version 10. And thanks to OpenTelemetry again, we talk about you know, the contextual linking or the related content. Down on the bottom left, we can easily jump into the logs for this service. We can jump back into the cluster and get to the actual node or pod that this particular service uh, is running on. So again, because OpenTelemetry is collecting everything for you, it's very easy to link everything together so you can easily uh, get down to um, where it is. So when you sort of like go and investigate a particular uh, trace, um, you can uh, look at a particular trace that is, is showing errors uh, within uh, w when you're collecting them. And with this trace here, we can see all the spans that make up this trace, and we can see that some of those spans are, are showing errors. So again, when we dive in to a particular span and, and look at the metadata for that span, uh, we can see here that we are seeing, you know, with this version 35.10, you know, we're seeing an error in valid request. Now, again, because we have a trace ID and we're tracking this trace ID all the way through uh, using OpenTelemetry, we again can provide uh, a related um, or related content links to go and pull out of our logs. Now the the, the trace ID that matches this particular trace we've got here. So with that trace ID, we can then go and jump straight into the logs and we can start then filtering a bit more on that. You know, we're going to have lots of logs coming in. So you might want to filter on error uh, in this case because we saw it as an error in the span. And again, um, with, with the logging capability, you can um, see the, the particular error there. And the error there is to do with a, a, an invalid token. So within, you know, because you've, you've used OpenTelemetry here, you're, you're pulling all the data uh, into one place. You can do the correlated searches. You can do the related linking of the data because there is this trace ID that tracks it all the way through. And, and because uh, all the spans are decorated with metadata about the environment with, with, within which they sit, it allows you to basically stitch that all together, which allows you to troubleshoot things very, very quickly. You're not having to go off to a log provider over here, and then you're going off to a trace engine here or trace UI here, and you've got your metrics being collected over here. With OpenTelemetry, it allows you to bring it all together uh, in, into one place. Another nice part of the OpenTelemetry um, capabilities is database query uh, performance. And with this, uh, because of the, the way that it in instruments your code, it can look at the database queries that that service, you know, or if that service is making database query calls, you can see that. And again, uh, we can metricize that, and you, you're going to get metrics in and around your database query performance. And you'll be able to see then you know, which are the slow running queries, et cetera. But again, this is all data that is collected by OpenTelemetry. And you know, how you visualize that or how you how build it out you know, can lead to very easily uh, identifying uh, issues and root cause. Coming back to, yes, sir. So the OpenTelemetry project at the moment only supports SQL-based databases. Uh, NoSQL databases are coming um, sh soon. So again, it's um, yeah, it's just purely just SQL-based databases. So you good old you know MySQL, Oracle, PostgreSQL, etc. Yeah. So again, part of the instrumentation. Um, it is only for .NET and Java at the moment. 
um, with other languages coming uh, as the project evolves. Um, but they just gone come out of beta with profiling for Java, and I think .NET has just come out as a beta as well. But you, you're able to get profiling data um, from uh, your Java and .NET uh, services running. Uh, I think .NET is only CPU, but Java is providing both CPU and memory uh, now uh, on the profiling uh, side of things. I mentioned about the OpenTelemetry WebJS uh, SDK. Uh, this is the real user data, um, real user monitoring part of it, which uh, basically allows you to send those traces again to collect and understand the performance of a real user. This is not intrusive in the way it's going to capture personal data. It will only capture W3C navigation timing uh, data from the browser. However, again, you can do some customization uh, and add some custom tags to your RUM uh, traces as well uh, as you build out the front end of your application. But this is a very, very lightweight library. You can choose your beacon where you want the RUM uh, data to go to. Um, and with, with that, that can be self-hosted, uh, the WebJS library, or you know, what a lot of people tend to do is put it on a CDN because you obviously don't want your end users you know, going to have to fetch the JavaScript library from elsewhere. Um, a lot of vendors in the space are providing this on CDNs for you to use anyway. Um, but the run data allows you then to essentially be able to understand the performance of your website um, from you know, all your users around the world. But it can also then pick up on things like uh, errors that you would see in your browser console. It, can un it will also report JavaScript errors that you might be seeing uh, you know, that are executed when the page is rendered with the end within the end user's browser. So you can easily identify patterns like, OK, well, that JavaScript function is working in, for example, uh, Firefox, but it's not working very well in, in Chrome, for example. Um, and you're able to see these kind of uh, errors, et cetera, and be able to metricize the data that you get from the WebJS library. And again, uh, because that trace ID that is initiated from the RUM session, um, you can then capture that. You can then inject into the, the header of, of that particular page the APM trace that was initiated when that user started their journey on that. And then you've got a correlation there between the run session and the APM session. So you, as I sort of like said earlier on, you can then track that all the way through your application. So um, with the example that I showed you, like, you know, there's a somebody coming into a, this microservices demo shop. Uh, they see a, a, a slow transaction you know, on the payment service because the version numbers is, is an erroneous deployment. You'd be able to trace that all the way back up and see slowdowns in your run data. And, come, you know, and so basically, you've got another way in to sort of like uh, look at the data and to be able to uh, troubleshoot that. So the, the, the OpenTelemetry project is uh, has a lot of investment from a, a lot of key companies out there. Uh, you know, Google still uh, donate to the project. Microsoft still donate to the project. AWS donate to the project. It's it's a fantastic tooling uh, for you to get observability inside of your applications and inside your organization. And we talked about, or I talked about, the three pillars of observability. I, I do encourage you to look at that blog article on the six pillars of observability, because I think the, the gentleman that wrote that has a very valid point that, you know, is going uh, beyond that now as, as these services get more and more complex, more diverse, more dispersed, etc. I think people need even more insight than just metrics, traces and logs in there. And he's, he's talking about the concept of events and profiling and exceptions, which are, you know, great additions to the observability pillar. And the Open Telemetry project it's, it will take you a long way to getting to be beyond the uh, standard three pillars of, uh, of observability. So I've obviously talked too fast because that was the last slide of my presentation and I've got 16 minutes left, so um, apologies. But um, thank you very much for listening to me. I hope you found that insightful, interesting and useful. Uh, just understanding a bit about the Open Telemetry project, where it comes from, and uh, you know where it's going. Yes, sir. I found your, when I was first like you said, log collection is not there yet, but it's on its way. 
Yep, sure. So the, the at the moment, what you can do with the Open Telemetry project is you can use your own, you can use a third-party log collection engine and have it, you know, have the logs go through the Open Telemetry collector that way. However, um, we d the the project does have support for logs in Kubernetes today, but that is it. So logs outside of Kubernetes that is still in development, and being an open source project, there isn't really a a, a particular timeline, but the it, the Kubernet the logging in Kubernetes is at beta stage at the moment. So you can get all the logs out of Kubernetes uh, using Open Telemetry. So what what can happen with the with the logging aspect of it all is that you know, when the, the way you can stitch it together is that the open telemetry collector will collect logs from you know Kubernetes. So it can be getting like the pod logs, et cetera. You, you already know that, that ID. Now with the instrumentation part of it, you've got the correlation there because the instrumentation will add the metadata about the pod that that service is running on. So you've now got the correlation so you can do the matching up of, you know, here's this pod, I want to look at its logs. You know, you can get straight in that way. Yeah. Then, okay, then I want to see the, oh, the log for date statement for that particular span. That yeah, no, that's not something that, that would have to happen in the log engine as to where the log goes. That's not something that the Open Telemetry project owns or decides, but they, they, they allow the decoration of the metadata, et cetera. And you know, the platform that you're using to do that, that would have to be responsible for that. So sorry, I mis misheard your question, but no, that's not something Open Telemetry does. It's just the collection engine. That's the, the bit that's gonna you know, get the traces for you, get the logs for you. The stitching it together bit is down to wherever they reside. Yeah, sorry. Cool. Well, um, I'll give you 13 minutes of your day back. Thank you very much.